times when I'm thinking about us Before we got lost and we parted Back to back we would carry on then We'd do anything for what we started But this time we could break Welcome, everybody, to the FPV News with me and it's Blunty. How y'all doing today? How's it going? How you doing, Blunty? Good. I can't. Can you make me see myself, if you don't mind? Sorry, oh, I'm right. shaking up the, the technical camera. difficulties already. But... No, I, you know what? I was thinking about that when, you, when, when we were in the song. We changed which camera you saw. Monk. Oh my God! It's just such a good start too, right there. But Blunty yeah, needs okay. to line himself up in in the there yeah. We there we go. I knew there was a step missing. Right. Okay, great. All right, all right, all right. Hang on a second. Hang on. We'll go. We'll go. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the FPV News with me and it's blunty how are you doing blunty good how's it going it's it's a good news day it is it's a big news day uh yeah. it's a big news day unless you hate dji in which case it's well there's some non-dji news there's some yeah no, there's even <laughs> some news you might you can make fun of the dji users if that's the thing you do everybody's got something today oh, yeah. I think. oh a little something for everybody and dogs yeah. And we've dogs. learned we've learned that people love news about drones and puppy dogs. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, uh, and so we got a little bit of everything today. But uh, before we get into the news, let's just take a second and thank you all for being here with a little shot of my main screen. Very glad you guys are here. Uh, we'll be checking out your comments throughout and. Uh, Acroweebo says, oh no, what did we do to end up in the street the stream notes? Is Acroweebo in the stream notes? Yeah, that's newbie drone. Newbie drone is definitely. Oh, Acroweebo's new. Yeah, no. They they did something very interesting. 
Uh, thank you guys for being here in the chat. 349 of you. Fantastic. And uh, thank you guys in the Discord as well. Oh, no, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have made the Chihuahua angry. Oh, <laughs> man. <clears throat> um, let's, uh, let's get into the first news item of the week, though. Blunty, let's not make them wait any longer. Uh, yeah. And that is going to be an acquisition of a beloved member of the FPV community by someone I've never heard of. Sorry. Yeah, that's very true. Catalyst Tells Machine it. Works uh, is like a, I don't know, what would you call him? A uh, bespoke bind and fly builder? I don't, I don't know. I, that's that exactly what I would call him. Bespoke is a okay. great term for them. They will yeah. hand build you, like lots of companies make bind and flies. But uh, Catalyst has always prided themselves on working with you to make something to your specs or just buy a bind and fly. And they've yeah. recently branched out into heavy lift Cine lifters uh, and are seem to be fairly competitive in that realm. Um, and now they've been acquired by Cyberlux. Yeah. What do we know about this, um, Blunty? Well, we don't know too much. Uh, Cyberlux seems to be kind of all over the place, but like... Uh, like digital military asset company, um, that sort of thing. Um, and they have decided to buy out uh, all of uh, 100%. Catalyst Machine Works. Yes, uh, it looks like it's a stock sale and uh, like a cash sale, but neither of those are really disclosed. Um, yeah. We just know that, that that's happening and it was for all of it. Um, and it seems like they're kind of in for the long term because there is like, you know, there's an investment cycle here. There's three year uh you know, three earn out on shares, 18 month investment cycle for cash. So they'll at least be there for a little while. Um, but I mm -hmm. thought it was quite interesting as they're talking here, um, you know, right at the bottom, bottom of that same paragraph, as a result, the uh, UAS business unit will deliver an expected revenue of $22 million. Um, so Whoa. That's pretty wild. 22 million is a very large number. Yeah. Uh, and that's not just like a single like IPO or something that's revenue. Uh, yeah. Also, apparently, Paul Nurkula is the Cyberlux UAS chief test pilot. I did not know that. Apparently, Paul works for them. Not sure if that was part of this acquisition just happened or or if he's done doing that for a while. There's some interesting stuff going on here. Um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. I believe he was brought on as part of this, but I, I, I might be getting that wrong. Gotcha. Uh, you and I were taking a look at their website again just to try to figure out like what's going on here. One of the things we noticed was that basically all of Catalyst Machine Works offerings have been incorporated into this website and sort of renamed. They no longer have names like the Ball Buster, the Big Dick Quadcopter. <laughs> Sorry, Neil, well, you're going to have to run your your they, your your, your, your middle school mind through a, a marketing team now. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little weird if you click in like like so they've got them like Cinema <laughs> Mini V2, and then if you click okay. into that. Mm -hmm. And then go to it. It actually ends up going to Money Shot Mini V. Oh, well, they do have marketing behind the name, so, so maybe they decided part, to keep them. So, yeah, it's like part there and part not. And you can see now, um, you know, this page is like an in between page now, and it's a Cyberlux company, and this is like their mm -hmm. Money Shot page now and stuff. So it's all kind of interesting. Being interesting. Um, so first of all, I I gotta say, you know, congratulations to Neil Whiteley and Catalyst Machine Works. Uh, I assume if he made a move like this, it was a good move for him. I assume he made uh, a fair sum of money because why would he do it if he yeah. didn't? Uh, and and congratulations to him. I wish him all the best. Um, uh, it's interesting to me that it was a 100% sale. Like if you look at yeah. the Red Cat acquisitions of – like we know that they acquired – they didn't acquire more than a controlling interest if my, if my memory is correct. Did they acquire a controlling interest in Fat Shark, or was it a, a minority interest? Oh, that I don't know. I was under the impression they did, but uh, I could be wrong. So. It wasn't a one hundred percent. I mean, Fat Shark retained some uh, uh, some of the stock. I'm pretty. Sh I'm I'm really sure about that. I guess I'm not sure if it was a controlling interest or not. It may have been a fifty one plus. Uh, so grain of salt there. Uh, the chat will tell me if I'm uh, if I've misremembered, but I, I don't think any of those were one hundred percent acquisitions. Uh, and so it's interesting to see a, a 100% acquisition here with Neil basically coming on as an employee, I guess, uh, uh, is how that would work. So fascinating. Um, and of course, we have no idea what that means for the future of Catalyst Machine Works. 
as an FPV company, does it mean they're dropping their their consumer drones and just doing, uh, you know, cine lifters? I don't well, know. Well, so they did say. I guess I may. I might have. Um, let's see if they put it on their website. They they did make a statement somewhere, but I think that might have been like on Facebook or something about the mm -hmm. acquisition. And they basically said like, don't worry, you know, uh, we got bought, but um, yeah, you know, it's going to be okay. That sort of thing. So yeah. Well, I got to uh, wonder my, how much how much of their money. I mean, it, it, you make you can theoretically make more money selling five thousand dollars cine lifters than you can selling uh, you know five hundred dollar freestyle frames, depending on your volume. I never got the impression they did a huge amount of volume of of freestyle yeah. frames. That's why I was kind of interested to hear that it was twenty two million dollars in expected revenue in the first year, and then leading up to like sixty million, which is just like that's like the entire. That's like all the money that Red Cat has to work with. <laughs> it's like what you know, like right. what they would be making in revenue. I mean, that's just it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, Red Cat has. I think they raised sixty million. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I found six zero. Oh, yeah. So I was able to find that. Um, I'm going to put it in the show notes here for you if you want to pull up mm -hmm. that statement from them. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a statement made on Facebook. Yeah. We're joining a team of highly skilled folks who will help. Okay. Let's close that window. We'll help propel our business into the stratosphere. We bring new talent, opportunities, and capital. Allows us to provide Catalyst Machine Works and Money Shot Cinema customers with more inventory, faster turnaround, yada, yada, yada. Our small business mindset will never change. Our attention to detail will always be laser focused. Etc. And yeah, but nowhere in there do they say, and we're going to keep making freestyle frames. That's also true. Yes. Yeah. I think it is interesting that they did end up listing what well, looks like a lot of freestyle and similar frames to what they've been selling, you know, basically that catalog move to, uh, mm -hmm. to the Cyberlux page. So it's possible that, you know, because so many things are there that we will see them continue to offer, um, you yeah. know, a lot of their, their options. Yeah. I guess the Whoopmaster 4-inch, the NERC, America, Bion, yeah. The mofo is still there. Um, very interesting. Um, yeah. Well, well, congratulations to Catalyst Machine Works, and we'll see where they go from here. Um, yeah. All right. Blunty, what's next? All right. So we've got pretty big news. Um, I think maybe a lot of people haven't seen this. I, we had, I just shared this around this morning. So uh, someone in the FPV WTF Discord that helped with the mar that did the margarine root hack. Mm -hmm. um, one of the people in there was digging through DJI Assistant in mm -hmm. debug mode and was able mm -hmm. to find a little snippet in there. And that snippet is active and uh, is a new code that has just appeared. Mm -hmm. And it is a, a listing hardware code for the DJI FPV Goggles V3. Um, and this is a pretty solid, about as solid as you can get. Like this basically mm -hmm. means the hardware code has been entered for a new piece of hardware that DJI is working with. Mm -hmm. um, and that comes in tandem, I guess, with our next story that we'll go to. Um, this came out on April Fool's, like right before mm -hmm. April 1st. But a lot of people thought this was an April Fool's <laughs> joke. Mm -hmm. um, I got a lot of that information, but basically um, I shared this around and uh, DJ uh, FPV WTF put this out, but basically the DJI Mini 3, which we have leaked photos of, um, mm -hmm. which we'll show, and the FPV Mini has been confirmed by the root team. They mm -hmm. also said a 1080p OLED goggle with Wi-Fi Bluetooth confirmed, which sounds like the V2 or the V3 goggle we're just looking at, which kind of right. lends credibility to that since this was before that. Uh, information came out mm -hmm. also they said a new year air unit is very likely they will say then the hardware code was not in the assistant when they were looking at the goggles mm -hmm. um and then also it looks like no support will be uh, for those old air unit and vista on the new goggles um, according to them on the leaks so uh, yeah. so uh the reason that i felt confident saying fpv goggles v3 confirmed in the title because of course dj hasn't confirmed it but it was leaked previously by a somewhat reliable leaker, and then when it then it was found in the code by the guys who are digging around in the root files. And to me, those things add up, and I'm comfortable saying it's confirmed. So let's yeah. um, let's just acknowledge how many people are going to be pissed. Yep, pissed so that for any there's this yeah. 10, 1080p OLED goggle. Yeah. 
but, but you can't have it unless you buy completely new hardware. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't even, you know, and rumor is it's not going to be back and pat to the air unit or the Vista. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's, that's... you can't even like have one 1080 quad with your V3 goggles yeah. and fly your V2s with everything else. Nope. Yeah. However, I think most of us know, like, this is DJI's modus operandi. This is like what they do. Yes, of you course. Know, hey, here, here's new stuff that doesn't work with the old stuff. Too bad. You get to buy it. But it's um, effing amazing stuff. Yeah. But it's amazing stuff. And so the question will be, what can they put out? And, you know, will it just be this FPV mini? Will there be a larger FPV drone that comes out as well? You know, a newer version? Uh, will this be like, you know, the room, the, the word was that the DJI FPV drone and the V2 goggles were OcuSync 3, if you look at the dual band nature. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is this like OcuSync 3 plus, and that's why it wouldn't work. Will the V2 work forward? But you know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's so much we don't know about the situation uh, right now. And we also, uh, I'll say we don't know time frame either. So. Yeah. And and I will say, before you get pissed off uh, uh, that you're getting left out, uh, if there's one thing I've learned, and, and folks who've been using DJI drones for years will know this, and folks in the FPV community who have just gotten used to the unique flavor of whatever that is DJI are learning this in real time, but yeah. it's that you don't like, don't hold your breath. Don't get excited. Don't get mad until you see what they actually release. Uh, yeah. I remember when they said that they were going to have USB video out uh, in the V2 goggles. And then it turned out that was only if you were using the DJI FPV drone, not the air unit in the Vista. And then, well, okay, you could do it, but only with the, uh, with the, with the freaking smart controller. And, and it was like, yeah. I was so excited because they confirmed it. And then when it, when it came out, it wasn't what I thought. So right now, people are hearing OLED goggle with 1080p. And they're like, oh, my, oh. when it comes out, what if it's 30 FPS? I mean, I right. don't know. Don't assume that it will be everything you want. You might. People were excited about the V2 goggle. And then when the V2 goggle came out, it was basically nothing. They were like, well, gee, I'm glad I didn't sell my V1s, some people said. So we'll we'll have yeah. to see. Yeah, I 100% agree. I think there's there's also a lot of questions here about, like, you know, what exactly we'll get in the goggle. If it is actually 1080p OLED, like, how much benefit will that be for people? Um, also, there's kind of a question, too, of, like, I don't know, if you consider we have currently 800p goggles or 810p, but only mm -hmm. the DJI FPV drone does 810 Correct. You know, our air units and Vistas do 720, even Correct. with updates. Correct. So, like, that's just another consideration to say, like, so, just because there's a resolution on the goggle doesn't correct. mean, like, maybe the new drone will be 1080 and the new air maybe, units will still be 720. May, or, exactly. Yeah. Maybe it's a 1080p panel in the goggle. Oh, big deal. Doesn't yeah. mean that the, you're assuming that the air unit is going to do 1080p. And maybe it will, but maybe it won't. And so let's wait yeah. and see. But the V3 goggles are coming. They will have a 1080p OLED screen, according to a, what we think is probably a reliable leak. And yep. we just need to wait and see how that will affect FPV uh, consumers. Yeah. And so um, that that actually, um, I'll just mention real quick that all this information came um, from the FPV WTF team. And Junus uh, has been really pushing this. He's the one who found the magic bit for the FPV out and everything. Um, so we've got a link in the show notes, buymeacoffee.com slash fpv.wtf to donate to them. I would really appreciate if you guys threw them a couple bucks, bought them a coffee. Um, they've mm -hmm. really been spending all their free time to do this shit, to make it work for everybody. And right. uh, as you'll see in just a minute, there's even more stuff coming out of this route already, and it's yeah. not going to stop. So These guys uh, are, this is all possible um, because of this. I, I think you could argue that it would be cool if this was the time where DJI abandoned the V2 goggle, because now yeah. that Junus and the other guys have root access, but there's so much potential for them to just gut this thing and make it dance like a freaking puppet on a string. Yeah. And if DJI was still using it in their product life cycle, they would be like, ah, we have to stop this. But if they've moved on to the V3, maybe, maybe, right. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. It's hard. It's really, yeah. It's really hard to know, but um, it definitely is. It's quite interesting to see where it's at already. So yeah, at the very least, we may see a price drop on the V2s. Although, again, I have to say, 
Lots of people thought that was going to happen when the V2 came out, and it didn't because the V2 is functionally the same as the V1 unless you fly the FPV drone. Yeah, I'm so also surprised you to just see don't this know. called. I'm also surprised to call this the V3, and I guess we'll say, well, let's move on to the next story because that'll kind mm -hmm. of point out why. So the next is a leak of the Mavic Mini 3 Pro, which came after the uh, the tweet as well. The tweet which said mm -hmm. we get the Mini 3. I think a lot of people knew the Mini 3 was coming, but it's mm -hmm. very timely. Um, so we got the Mini 3 Pro leaks. And interestingly enough, uh, while the Mini 3 Pro is cool, it's not really FPV oriented, except we've talked before about it might be usable with the new goggles. There's been rumors mm -hmm. that going around, and maybe it was even the drone that people were talking about, and there's no drone coming. But if you check mm -hmm. out that top right picture there, um, in the top of that right picture, uh, in black, uh, up to the top left on the box there, Mm. Ah, it says FPV Pro. I see that. It does look like it says that, doesn't it? It does, yes. And for some reason, that is on the box. And it does look like if you look like on down on the left, if you move your mouse to the left, the blue back there sure does look like a Mini 3 silhouette. Um, mm. It's even got that little, like the blue is that sensor that's on the front on the left picture. You can see mm -hmm. the round sensor. It mm. definitely looks like the profile. So my guess would be we're seeing the back of a box that says, here's a feature this can use the FPV Pro goggle, and maybe that's the name of the goggle they're going to go with, mm. or maybe that's some tentative name because this is all in testing or anything. But it is pretty interesting that we see FPV Pro as a thing on a box. So Yeah. All right. Yeah. To coincide um, with all this, yes, uh, we've, got, we've got the next story, which is just more DJI stuff for you. We're not going to stop with the DJI stuff for a minute here. <laughs> Um, we'll try to get through it quickly. I, I think this all kind of tracks with, with the rest of this stuff is that we are seeing a big old DJI sale. And we don't really know. DJI almost never goes on sale. Um, right. So it's kind of interesting. We, we have seen the DJI FPV on sale a little bit for that $1,000 mark, which is just above that 25%. Um, but it is interesting to see that a lot of their products are going on sale, which kind of leads us to say we're going to see a new line of products come out here. Uh, that Mini 3 Pro, maybe the new DJI FPV drone, the new goggles, the, the, a new Air maybe, like as we go on through the year, a lot of different things it looks like uh, are going to be happening. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, stuff's shaken up. Yeah. Uh, it's now is the, the, now I think is the time, at least until April 9th, to wait yeah. to buy DJI stuff. If, yeah. it, and just see. I mean, you can afford to wait four days, five days for the price drop. And then once the price drop comes, you have to decide if you want to send your, spend your money or if you want to wait for the next big thing. Um, having waited for so long for the V2s to come out and then been so kind of underwhelmed when they came out, I uh, I don't know. P there's people in the comments who are like, ah, I just bought the V2 goggles today, damn it. And it's like, well, if they were going to go on sale 25% off, yeah, maybe you could just, can you return them? Can you return right. them and just buy them again in four days for 25% yeah. off, right? And, Why, I don't and know. we don't know for sure exactly what's going to go on sale, how it's going to go on sale, you know, but Osita is definitely a good source. So I mean, definitely you could, something to be keeping an eye out for. You could theoretically, if you had a, enough credit card balance, just buy another set on the fourth and you're probably still in your whatever 30-day or two-week return window. I mean, that's risky, of course, but um, there's options is all I'm saying. Um, yeah. And I don't think we should jump to any conclusions yet. So, uh, all righty. Is that it? Or we have one more. We have one more piece We're, of DJI news. One more. But yeah. this is cool because this is news about the team that has rooted the DJI goggles and is going in there and just effing things up to give us yeah. what DJI never would. Oops, wrong wrong title there yeah and oh so this yeah this is essentially this is essentially a proof of concept it is working if you really are a tinkering person you could go and find this uh, but we did not link it to you on purpose because it is real early but uh most of this is done and right now uh this is on dji goggles there's no trickery here there's nothing crazy fancy going on there's basically just a layer an extra layer they've done um mm -hmm. and essentially uh you're seeing a the full analog osd on dji goggles working properly um, it's got a yes. little bit of latency, but it's not bad. Um, and basically how they're doing it is um, taking over the, the, the like the top layer of the goggle. 
So like the top layer of the goggle, that, that layer part um, gives you all kinds of different pieces and that's being replaced by this. So it does mean you lose a ton of functionality um, yeah, like I don't DJI... see the I don't see the goggle OSD, for example. Yes, yeah. So essentially, it removes the radio, uh, like a radio CP layer from it. It removes a display of UI, and it removes recording video. However, those layers are gone, but they're interaction layers, so they could be added back through code. So um, mm -hmm. it does look like it's possible that in a release you could see back a function to record that's just integrated into the code for this MSP display port function. So, so the takeaway here is that this is 100% a proof of concept and not in any way a usable thing, well, but it, it's usable it does, if you're a real hacky person and you're already doing this kind of stuff and you know about Android NDKs and stuff. Like if all that I stuff would, makes sense to you, then yeah. yes. But I mean, the fact no. that you don't have access to the DJI menu to me would be a, like you can't do things like change your camera settings. Yeah. I mean, I think most people yes. would say that this is so, still proof of so concept. Essentially how you use it right now, if you want to, is you get everything ready, you get set up to fly, the quad set up and all your camera settings and everything's set. And then you trigger this to take over the goggle and then you fly with OSD. Yeah. Kind of like the process currently. So. And it adds a little latency, you said. Uh, not to the video, but to the OSD, yeah. Because oh, it's sensitive. over, it's just over the video. It's not like uh, yeah. stealing the video. So, so uh, the good, so what I take from this is that these guys are making progress yes, toward giving us features like MSP DisplayPort uh, yeah, there's another, and so forth. There's another one today that's not even far enough to like show you anything about, but somebody figured out how to port live audio, uh, funnel, uh, figured out how to port live audio out of the air unit. Um, it's got about hundred to 200 milliseconds of audio latency, but currently you can get live audio through the goggles from the area in it currently. I um, knew that it yeah. was possible. I yeah, knew that so. thing had a microphone and, and there also, had to be a way to send it over the data link. Today, like five of the guys were sitting around with Matt's tech, um, looking through all the, the way the channels and everything are sent to figure out how to beat the 13.3 kilometer limit. They were talking about how all the stuff works and which variables it would be and how you would control it and how all the LTE stuff works. If you're an LTE engineer, or if you know anything about this stuff, please go to the FPV.WTF. Uh, they really need your help over there because they need to know more about LTE. So uh, yeah, it's it's just really awesome. And this is just the beginning, I think. Yeah. Do, do we know if the Betaflight OSD is display is recorded in the DVR? Or is it's it not, after the no DVR? There's no DVR because you can't, because you're overriding do you see what oh, I'm saying? The DVR is one of the functions that you've taken like the, away. The, the recording is gone. Yes. So when this yeah. is released, hopefully there'll be a new recording so layer what, added. What they're going to gonna need to do is essentially rewrite the entire interface of the goggle to yeah, that, that, sort of that, like, give that you layer. back those functions. Yes. Yeah. Re mm. Basically replicate the functionalities through that layer. I mean, yeah. that's not the end of the world. It's, it's, it's at the end of the day, it's only, you know, let's say it's 50 functions in that menu. I don't, I don't know the actual number, but like, I'm not, you know, so you just have to map the user it's, interface to the underlying it's, functions. It's, I was going to say, I think it's just, yeah, the UI mapping part, like everything in the back is still there. You just got to do the mapping part. So, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, uh, which don't, don't mean to, uh, it's going to be a ton of work, but yeah. it doesn't sound like it is a architectural Impossible. problem. It's just yeah. a pain in the ass. Yeah. And it's that's really again, something. We're, again, we're just seeing what's possible. People are diving in yep. and digging in more and figuring more out. So now is uh, this yeah. code that is running on the goggles? Or is it uh, code that is running off the goggle and then feeding the image to the goggle? Have they actually hacked new code into the goggles? Uh, Do we know see. that? Yeah. Well, yeah, I believe they're pushing code into the air unit in the goggle. Uh, yes, that is correct. Yep. Amazing. I'm looking at the GitHub right now. Yeah, it's Amazing. basically pushing code to to both sides. So. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So I'm so excited about this. Uh, not just because – it's so excited because it's so cool to see like freaking superheroes gutting this impenetrable fortress. It's like watching Ocean's Eleven so, where they go so, into the casino and they rob the vault. It's so cool. Bro. Bri3D is in chat, um, and he is the one who did this, uh, MSP code. And he says, uh, you cannot record the OSD. It's really difficult because of the way he's adding it. He can bring DVR back so he could record the video under it. 
-hmm. But then you could provide the data and draw the OSD back in post like we do otherwise. Right, so you can easily be... record the data and then redraw yeah. it in post. That's trivial. Yeah. 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 I'm so excited about this. Um, yeah. I mean, this is going to breathe new life. For everybody who heard that the V3 goggle is coming and got mad, this yeah. is the silver lining in, in a way. Yeah. That these guys are going to absolutely just tear the shit out of the V2 goggle and give us everything we wanted. And there's no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm fantasizing, right? But I want, I want it to be true, and I, I hope it will be. Yeah, so. I think the only layer that they can't really get to is like the R2S, like the actual. Like there's some over the air code that's not controlled by variables in the software, I think generally speaking, like that you can mm -hmm. easily get to. And I think that's where it's gonna be, like there may be a couple things in there that you can't really do, but uh, yeah, well. yeah. But otherwise, Very I mean, cool. it's just really cool how open this is and uh, more and more exciting. We'll keep letting you know. Uh, I wish we lived happen. in a world where DJI would just open source it Very and give true. it to us. Yep. Yeah. Well, very cool. All right, let's move on. Uh, from DJI. We're not going to talk about DJI anymore. Yes. Tonight. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> uh, thank you to the Margarine team and all the guys out there who are working on, on this. It's, it's, you're doing God's work. I swear to God. Um, next up, we've got BLLE 32.9 released. And this is a little bit confusing because if you were running the test builds of 32.8.3, 32.9 is the, it's 32.8.3, right? Yeah. Did I yes. get that right? He's, I, yeah, I think Scout said somewhere. I couldn't find his exact... Like, I went to the RC Groups post, and he just said it's the same thing. I know in another place he said there's minor bug fixes included um, that were changed a little bit, but basically it should be the same code. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's basically the release version of the code. Also, just a PSA, little PSA in the middle of the show here for people. Um, if you scroll down to the bottom of that page real quick. Oh, me. okay. Sure. Uh, he did let us know that for some reason, Hobbywing has decided to hold their code back. Um, so if you do have a Hobbywing ESC, that's still going to be in beta for like about a month, he said. And they still take more than a month. I, to get their I've code seen out. this before. I saw this with 32.8. Uh, yeah. People with Hobbywing ESCs were like, there's no code here. Hobbywing, I don't know, just wants, I mean, God bless them for doing additional testing and not just pushing it out and frying ESCs. Um, the main advantage that this is going to give people is uh, by RPM variable PWM, and there was a bidirectional D shot bug in 32.8.1 and 2, which caused the yeah. RPM values to be incorrect and caused like a dirty motor traces and RPM filters were wrong. So this is where you want to be if you're running 32.8. You want to be on. You want to skip 32.8 at this point and go straight to 32.9. Or stay yeah. on thirty two point seven if you're not using bidirectional, or if you're not using by RPM PWM, I guess. Um, yeah. I, so I I gotta say, and everyone should take this with a giant grain of salt. I got an email from one person today, and he said, "Is thirty two point nine safe to use?" I just flashed thirty two point nine to two of my ESCs, and they both burned. And I'm like, like it thirty two eight three has been tested. For so long, it's it got to be a coincidence, right? Yeah, um, yeah. I wouldn't. I, it's been tested. Have I mean? I don't know the date it was pushed, but I believe it's been months. Yeah. At this point, so. Yeah, um, if you're not, if you're having bad results now, now, other people are having bad results. Like Bad for Life says they're having bad results with by RPM. Not everyone will get great results with by RPM variable PWM, but you can always just go to standard you know, whatever, 24K PWM, and then, you know, you're, you're fine. Um, yeah, there's not much There's not much special going on in there. It's basically just scaling the PWM based on what it can read from the ERPMs. Mm -hmm. So um, it's very, you know, maybe it's possible that there's some issue um, on the actual ESC with, like, the MCU mm -hmm. miscommunicating the ERPM, so that's causing problems there. If you change to scaling RPM with the throttle, I don't believe it's possible for that to happen, so... You might try that or just wow. lock your PWM and make sure yeah. everything's the same because a locked PWM should be the same as 32.7, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, in fact, yeah, yeah. So there you go. That is available. You can get it. You don't have to do any fancy uh, hoop jumping or downloading. You can just go straight to 30. In fact, I should put a note on my video 
about 32.8.3 that people should just use 32.9. Let me just make a little uh, how to 32.8.3. Yeah, there we go. I'll make a note to go back and do that so people know they can do that. Um, all righty. Next up, newbie drone. Newbie drone has done something a little controversial, Blunty. Um, and it goes back to let's talk about battery connectors first. So battery sure. connectors are a big deal with tiny whoops. They have a huge effect on performance. Like the standard battery connector was a pH 2.0 and it's such a tiny connector that the resistance of the pins, it can really cause a lot of voltage drop and power loss. Mm. Yeah. So then what came next? What came after pH 2.0? Uh, I believe BT2 was next as far as I know. Beta FPV BT2 came was... out with the BT 2.0 yeah. connector. Yeah, and also I guess we should say B PH2 also has rolled and solid pins, but essentially they're both correct. You know, uh, rolled or worse, but the solid are better. They're still not great. BT2 came out much better. It's a little heavy. It is. Yeah. The connectors, the connectors are rounded. Um, it's mm -hmm. also, um, you know, by Beta FPV, and it uh, from everything that I've heard of, Beta FPV does charge for use of that connector, or at least when you see it in different batteries, typically, yeah, they do. They typically cost more. Um, I know that kind of varies in different places, and I think it probably depends on where they source them, um, and you know that sort of thing. But yeah. Um, to, to my understanding, you know, um, yeah, they're a little heavy and they're a little expensive. Yeah, but the alternative would be to go to something like an XT30, which clearly performs better, but is way too heavy yeah. for all the little 1S 300, 450 milliamp hour packs um, yes. for, for the most part. Like I have seen a 450 1S with a, I think I've seen a 450 1S with an XT30 on it for like a toothpick, but they're pretty rare. Yeah. Um, so the BT 2.0 performs better, but you have to pay beta FPV to use it. And a lot of people, especially like newbie drone, don't want to be paying beta FPV a dollar a battery to use their sure. proprietary connector. And even if um, you don't, it is, it's, it's beta FPV's design. So beta FPV made a connector that they think is the best based on their ideas. Yeah. You know, it's got rounded pins, which are a little weird of a choice. That most of the things in the hobby don't use the rounded pins and stuff. So anyway, mm -hmm. we got that. Then GNB decided to do GNB's connector, the GNB 27 connector. Yeah, and, and I only is... just learned about this like when we did a new product roundup two weeks ago. I didn't know this existed, yeah. and yeah, I was skeptical. For, I think like six months ish or something like that. They they brought these out, but they've been slowly gaining traction. Um, and it's sort of it's supposed to be like a smaller XT30 is the idea behind them. Is like you know what they wanted to to shoot for with them. Um, they are still those rounded pin designs, but they're in like a like a different uh, casing. Um, but so the, anyway, the, so the advantage of the GNB is that they're not licensing it. They're just putting it out there for free. Is that correct? Yes. It's so we should all just use the GNB connector. Part of the problem is it's hard to source this information. So like okay. that's what I hear. But if you actually look up and try to do any of this stuff, like as not a manufacturer, uh, that's not very clear. Okay. So, so um, then to, can we come to the news item? Yes. So then we come to the news item. Newbie Drone has decided – to make their own connector, um, what they're calling the BND 3.0. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be newbie drone, NBD 3.0, or if they're calling it that for a different oh, reason. That makes um, sense. The NBD 3.0 would make more sense, wouldn't it? Maybe that's a typo. Yeah, um, but basically, either way, they have decided to uh, release their own connector. And he says, basically, it's similar to BT2, um, similar size, different connector. Um, if you expand that, um, Mm. that comment a little bit there i think he also mm. says yeah they're trying to get um oh i believe before it said something about half the weight but i know they're trying to get it smaller um yeah and that sort of thing so i just think it's i just think it's time we have a conversation about this because yeah because we see in license to drive says and i think this is where you're going how many yep. what battery connector designs do we actually need Yes. It's too many slices. Yeah. So I don't know, man. This is just a problem. I I think I don't know. I, I have a couple different opinions about this, but if you look at the history of Newbie Drone, Newbie Drone isn't trying to be uh open source or friendly to anyone anyway. Right. So a newbie drone is not like the people to do this. But I feel like somebody should be putting out uh a connector and then open sourcing it. 
and then having the right. community help design it and then saying, hey, we'll make these and we'll use these on our batteries because the community said they're the best. So let's go through iterations. Let's like all talk about it and decide which thing we should do and then use that or just pick one that's already there. Um, if there's a cost to them, then be a parent about that. Come out as newbie drone and say, hey, we talked to GNB. Hey, we talked to right. Beta. They both charge us for the connector. We want a free connector. Yeah, by the way, source by the way. Edoc in the chat says that GNB definitely isn't giving away their connector for free. I don't know if that's gotcha. true, but I wanted to gotcha. make sure I, I – yeah. Yeah, we could do something. Could Should we do something like the uh, – like TBS's open source frame? Just let the community right. design it? Yeah. I mean, to me, that seems like the smarter way as a company because then you know people are going to be down to purchase it, you know. Mm -hmm. and maybe there's even some clever stuff the community will come up with that you don't know about. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, the problem is standardization. So right now, a yeah. lot of people still run PH 2.0 connectors because it's just hard to buy batteries with BT 2.0. If you, if you install a BT 2.0 on your quad and use a BT 2.0 battery, you will get better performance. That's a fact. But like until recently, some of the best batteries weren't available with BT 2.0 connectors. And in fact, I have said in the past, the Newbie Drone Nitro Nectar Gold, when they first came out, they were better than the best batteries you could get with a BT 2.0 on them. And I was like, you should just use these with a good pH 2.0 connector. That's the best performance. Now you can yeah. get the that same style of battery with a BT 2.0 connector on it. And that's the best. But if you're going to commit to putting a connector on your quad, you damn well want to have batteries with that same connector on it. And if only Newbie Drone is going to sell these batteries with this NBD connector on it, that is going to, I mean, they're good batteries, but... Like people outside the USA have to pay ridiculous shipping to buy from Newbie Drone. That alone is going to be a deal breaker. Yeah. However, like I mentioned before, it's not like Newbie Drone are the people to do this because Newbie Drone still has, unless I'm wrong, Newbie Drone still has different size whoop connectors than everyone else. Mm -hmm. And they're still using B sign OSD. And you mean the motor connectors, well. right? Yeah. 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 You can't use Newbie Drone motors on, on a happy model flight controller unless you direct solder it because their plugs aren't compatible. Yeah. Um, so basically, Newbie Drone is going to – we would guess that Newbie Drone is going to use this on their whoops. They're going to use this on their batteries, and we have no reason to think that they would, like, license it to anybody else. Yeah. And that's going to kill it, I predict. Yeah. Or at least it's going to segment the market more. You know what I mean? Like, it's it, it just like all you're doing by this is segmenting it. So Yeah. Kelvin in the chat. Kelvin is – Oh, uh, Kelvin Lee is in the chat. Uh-oh. We're going to yeah. have to stop making shit up. He, the, the owner of Newbie Drone is here. He said, we will make it as cheap as possible, also no license fee. So, Well, shit. Yeah, my, my only thing, Kelvin, is how far are you into this molding process? Like, how far have you gone into this? Because why don't you just say, like, hey, this is what we're going to make. Here's the specs, design, shape, and everything about it, and here's what we've done in testing. If you right. think something could be better, so, submit uh, designs to us and say, like, I don't know, make this open source and try to help people. Like, I don't know. I bet people will just give I, you I, free designs and you could still sell it. You it, think that it, it could be improved if it were open source. You, you have, I mean, I don't, we, don't, we don't know don't a know lot about it. We haven't seen it. Yes. Right. Yeah, but my point other, is just the fact that, like, if you have the opportunity and people are going to complain later that you didn't do this, then yeah. you have a free ticket to stop the complaining or at least have a have a pushback on it. If you yeah. say, like, yes, we did a comment period. We asked people what they want. Yeah. We, we took a look and said, like, oh, I understand your complaint here or your complaint here. And then when you release it, you could list those concerns and say, these are the things we couldn't take care of, but we were able to take care of all these community concerns and stuff. Uh, stuff like now, that. I I do want to uh, acknowledge one reason. Like you said, well, why don't you just open source the design? And one yeah. thing that would do is that would mean that anybody could manufacture it. He says they're going to give it away without a license fee. And I think that yeah. it for a connector like this to con succeed, it has to be freely available to yeah. anybody who wants to use it so that it can proliferate. That's how standards That's how standards succeed. So good move there. I, I, so I, I didn't expect them to do that, but I, I approve of that. But there is a reason why they they shouldn't just release the specs and let anyone manufacture it. And I will point to the Popo the Popo technology developed by Lumineer, the little ball bearings, spring loaded ball bearings, right? The problem with that is that if the prop is not meticulously manufactured, the prop will rip out, the prop will fly off. And so right. Lumineer props and HQ props are always perfect on Popo motors. 
but gem fan props and I forget who else I've tried. They constantly, they, they gum up, they rip out. And I've had people who said this popo system is crap. It's just a pain in the ass and it doesn't work right. And I'm like, what props are you using? And they say, gem fan, gem fan makes great props. They make bad popo props. And I'm like, you got to use HQ or Luminaire props. And this is a case where if newbie drone was to say, anyone can make these connectors. Now beta FPV starts making them. Happy model starts making them. And, they're, and maybe they're shitty. And people are like, this connector is shitty. So I don't blame newbie drone if they say, only we are going to manufacture them and we will sell them to you at a reasonable price, but we're not going to let you make them. I get what you're saying, but uh, I've never bought PH2s from only one place. Right? I mean, have you bought shitty, loose PH 2.0s? Sure, but those are like from shitty brands on Amazon. That, you know what I mean? Like, I Nobody says the PH2 is a garbage connector because you can buy shitty PH2s. I think it's they different when your name shitty. is on it, though. I think it's different when it's the newbie drone connector. Well, I don't know. I mean, that's what you're naming. It. That's what you've decided yeah. to name it. Yeah. I didn't name it. So um very I mean, glad to see you, very glad yeah, to see Kelvin here. Yeah, Shall I'm very happy ahead. that Sorry. he's here and at least at least talking about it for sure. Um yeah. I don't know. He said they're gonna have a molded prototype in about a month, so I'm interested to see what they come out with and how it looks. I just think that uh if we want the if we don't want the market to segment more and we want everybody to be able to participate better. I think that we have to make sure we make these considerations when, when you do something like this, because like, yeah, I don't know. Like, again, like you said, if Nubitro makes all these and then the EU has to pay extra for them, they're never going to use it. Valid. No, it's not an option. Valid. Valid. Like, it's just, it's just. Well, done. it's like, it's like the argument of why uh, Betaflight is better than KISS. And yeah. one argument for why Betaflight is better, it, it's the same with Express LRS and Crossfire. Because there are a many manufacturers, some better, some worse, but it means that at the end of the day, the customer can usually find product. Now, if there's only a single source of manufacturing, when product is gone, there's no more product and you just have to suck, suck it. You're done. Yeah. And, and, and the concern would be that that, that situation would exist with this new battery connector and it benefits everyone. If there is a, is a dominant battery connector. Because there are, then all the battery uh, manufacturers will switch over and use it, and everybody will be happy and have choice. So, yeah. So we, I think what we're saying is we want this to be good. We want it to succeed. The current options are not fantastic, but if a newbie drone is a single source, then we worry that that would keep it from succeeding as much as it could. Yes. Yep. Yeah, well, That's okay. pretty much. Pretty much what we're saying. I just don't want to see in six months from now more new people coming on and going. I bought the a newbie drone set, and now none of my batteries work with the Mobula Seven that I want to buy. So now I've got to buy the connector, yeah. to put on my Mobula Seven, and then only buy newbie yeah. drone batteries. Yeah. I mean, that's probably going to happen. Like, no matter how good this connector is, Happy Model's just going to keep shipping PH two point oh. Why? Right. Right. Well, you got to get competitive price, and you got to have like. I don't know. Happy Model is happy to jump on any. I mean, they're Express LRS. That's city true. Over. That's true. It's they just, jumped. Just, they jumped Express LRS. Like maybe they. I mean, what do they yeah. care? Yeah. So. All right. I think. All right. Patrick Ruan says Blunty is right a lot. <laughs> so that's that nice a, to know that. Well, that's nice. Yeah. So where are yeah. you, Joshua? Oh, don't don't you don't need to do that. <laughs> just take the compliment. Just take okay. the compliment. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I thought this was relevant. <laughs> yes yeah it's true <laughs> uh all right let's move on uh we look forward to finding out more about this this uh new whoop connector from newbie drone and uh thanks for yeah. giving us the opportunity to complain about it because it makes good content uh all next right. up we have got beta flight 4.3's most exciting filter is that is that overselling it, Blunty? <laughs> no, it is the most exciting filter. I think that's the correct. <laughs> and is there the correct? What is that for people who are excited about filters? What are we looking at here? All right, so this is the SDFT filter. We're looking at an example of the SDFT filter here in this video, and basically what we're seeing is uh, the blue line is your noise, so that's mm -hmm. your gyro signal, right? Uh, the little blue peaks, the little like uh, 
these the things triangles here. are the peaks of noise that are detected by the uh, by this new filter, basically the SDFT, uh -huh. and uh -huh. it's called a sliding discrete Fourier transform. And basically, oh. instead of a fixed Fourier transform, which was happening before it, like fixed points, mm -hmm. basically the sliding Fourier transform will follow those peaks and will attempt to land on the peaks and will consistently. This is like actively while you're flying. Uh, this is mm -hmm. frames through the flight will actively now, slide and try to find the exact peak. And then the, the orange at the bottom is the filtered result of right. those peak findings. And we can see how well the filter is sort of crushing those peaks and getting rid of that noise. Blunty, I thought the dynamic filter already was basically doing this, was tracking noise peaks. They had sliced up the frequency into like bins and the bins would be turned up and down. Uh, I think that was based on. I believe my understanding is part of that problem was because of the way it worked w was bins. Mm -hmm. So like because everything had to be binned out. You can see here everything's just freely sliding. Oh, so not... we've gotten rid of the bins, my and we can is, literally just track the peaks. Yeah, my understanding is if you want to call them bins, there's like a ton of them instead of just the sets mm -hmm. that there were before. And mm -hmm. before you would have a notch, and then you would have it widened so that you're landing on the peak with the notch. Um, that's why you had like the two slots of the notch, like the eight percent or whatever it was. Um, but now you're you just basically have these individual uh, <clears throat> individual peak uh, knockdowns, and you and you can pick how many you want, and then it's just going to find uh, the mm -hmm. three you need. And part of the the benefit of this is resonance, because one thing the notch wasn't really doing was finding <coughs> resonance. The notch was like hitting the peak and then eight percent off the peak. So it's mm -hmm. going to catch that peak, but it's not like mm -hmm. going and finding the resonant peak and the next resonant peak. But mm -hmm. what these sliders can do is actually go pick out those resonant peaks and catch them as they move. We need to get a couple uh, things out of the way here uh, from the comments. Thank you, Quick Flash, uh, who is the EMU Flight lead developer and UAV Tech, uh, who are in the chat. Uh, Quick Flash points out that uh, my title, Betaflight 4.3's most exciting filter, I was referring to the dynamic notch filter, which in Betaflight 4.3 uses the sliding dynamic Fourier transform. But Quick Flash points out that uh, at SDFT is not a filter. It is a technique for decomposing the, the, the frequency elements of the gyro data. Fine. Valid. Uh, yeah. He also points out that there are still bins. There's just 50 bins instead of 16 bins, which is... Or 70, he said quick flash says 70. There's more bins, so you get more precise yeah. filtering and you can more precisely track the notches. Um, and, and we're no longer hitting that notch width thing. You actually have multiple uh, you know, spots out there to go catch all the peaks. So. Right, right. Um, so the long story short, it is a much, much better dynamic notch system that is more capable of tracking the peaks precisely and tracking multiple peaks, which is the thing that we're showing in this video. Um, yeah. the, the question that some people might ask is, Blunty, if this is so good, do we still want to use RPM filtering, which sort of does the same thing, except it's specifically tracking the motor noise. Do you have any thoughts about that? I don't have any idea because UAV Tech said last time no, I, so I don't have any clue. I was told yes. Well, so uh, UAV Tech said if you can't use, there was a thing we were talking about which would prevent you from using RPM filtering, like the bug in Betaflight yeah. where you couldn't use RPM filtering, Betaflight 4.3. Yeah. Um, and he was like, just use the SDFT, the dynamic notch filter. It's so good now. You don't need it. But I don't think he yeah. was saying that if you had access to RPM filtering, you shouldn't use it. Um, but either way. Because it's gonna, it's the RPM filtering is gonna be, should be much lower latency because you don't have to do that Fourier transform to decompose the data. You can just, that's the whole point is you can just track know. the motor noise I was, directly. I was under the impression this is so fast that it like competes now, but maybe somebody can correct me. Interesting. That. Uh, that was like one of the big pushes of this was that it's so much faster than the old method too. But um, yeah, maybe mm. somebody can correct that. Quick Flash says he did a deep dive into how this worked a month or two ago. Seems like we could look that up. Quick Flash, you're a moderator. You should be able to post a link. Quick Flash, if you want to post a link to your deep dive in the chat, I'm sure we would appreciate it. And Blunty and I, I mean, this is the news. This is not Blunty and JB go deep. Uh, so we can, we, I'm sure we would all love to uh, learn more about that. Um, 
Aber the Ham in the Discord says it's about time we started using Fourier transforms for filtering. The dynamic filter has used Fourier transforms since that's how it, that's just how it works. Yes, uh, it's just fix, it's just a sliding dynamic instead of fix mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Um, so the dynamic notch filter is much more capable. And what that means to most people who will be using RPM filtering is that it will be better and better at detecting frame resonances and other sources of noise other than the motors and crushing them. And that's really exciting. Yeah. All right. Quick Flash thinks the latency should be pretty bad for the SDFT. Surely the Betaflight devs have thought about that. They're very concerned about latency. Well, he said FFT there. So. I thought he said SDFT was high latency. Anyway. Um, okay. All right. Uh, very uh, interesting stuff related to Betaflight. 4.3 still. When's it coming out, Plenty? Betaflight 4.3. Uh, RC2 is supposed to be any day, or RC4, RC4 is supposed four. to be any day. Somebody just told me that, so um, mm -hmm. I would expect it real soon. Normally, when you see it get continue, continually pushed off like this, like we said last week, um, it's just going to continually be uh, little things they're finding that they feel are necessary to fix before they put in another RC. So Yeah. Uh, yeah. If, if RC4 comes in the next few days, then I would expect to see an actual, and if there are no bugs found, then I would expect to see a release in no less than like two weeks would be my gut read. Uh, but that's just my read. So we're still a yeah. couple weeks out at least. Um, all righty. Uh, let's, let's see. Wait. No. Wait. Oh, that's it. Oh, we're going straight on to it's barely news. News yes. items that are cool and interesting, but not really like news. Uh, <laughs> and we're going to start plenty with everyone's favorite. What do we got here? Yeah. Uh, so we've talked a little bit about, we, we showed a dog that got rescued by a sausage. They use a sausage to bring him back home. And then we saw a dog that got, um, you know, some dogs that got fed while there was a volcano going on. It was too hot to get right. there. So this is pretty cool. Some guy basically in the neighborhood of this area uh, saw a news report that said this dog was missing and they were asking people to go out and, you know, look for him if they could find him. And uh, so he, he thought, you know, it's a white dog and it's about to snow, so I better get out there while I can. Mm -hmm. and just decided to go up and try to find him. And uh, after a while and a bunch of runs, uh, he was eventually able to find a white dot. And that white dot was the dog. Uh, the dog was okay, right? The We're not about okay. to see like a dog carcass. Okay, thank God. No, yeah, the dog was okay. <laughs> that's not that's not good news. <laughs> yeah, uh, the dog was okay. All right. Oh wait, I see it. I see the white dot. We found him. Oh my God, how long must he have been scanning? My God. He sure said he was almost. He, he was like ready to go home, and he did one more run the opposite direction because they didn't think he was over there. Mm. Um, yeah, we're able to find him. So poor dog. Uh, then he went out in the woods, chased him down for like an hour while he tried. Oh to my god! Because of course the dog okay. tried to run away. Yeah, the dog did not know he was a friend, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, eventually got him back. Should have had a sausage. Owner. Oh, there's the dog. The dog's like, "F you, buddy. I'm out of here." Like, go yeah. home. We're looking for you. <laughs> Let's play. <laughs> I should have brought a sausage. That's really awesome. Yeah. See, good news with drones. We're very excited about that. All right, yeah. next up, the best April Fool's drone joke this year. Yes. And as you can see, <laughs> it's a great one. Basically, somebody without any announcement, without any forethought or anything, basically went out and designed a, uh, a drone show with a QR code, got it all permitted, but didn't announce anything, and just put it up on April Fool's. And, uh, and it, was a, it was a Rick roll. So he rickrolled a bunch of people with the drone lights just because he felt like that was a cool thing to do. I mean, I, I love it. I'm surprised that, like, how do they test that your phone would recognize a QR code with this sort of resolution? Like, I must have tested it. I'm really surprised yeah. and kind of impressed that it was able to do that. Yeah, I think these drone light show companies, once they've done it a couple times, they've got like a, they mm -hmm. just draw it in their thing. And it's like, yeah, it's got to be this size. And it just does it. It's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, I feel now, like this is a this is a good April Fool's joke. This is a good one. Yeah, you've rickrolled an entire city. And now of yeah. course 
every you know you just we know that you can QR code a whole city with whatever you want. So I'm sure this power will only be used for good. <laughs> um, so if you want to see some reactions to that, they're there in that story. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that is going to bring us almost to the end of the broadcast. Uh, first of all, we're going to read we're going to read the super chats. We got some super chats to read, and we uh we got some plugs. I want to make a plug here for. It's Blunty, not not the person, but the <laughs> website, itsblunty.com, uh, where you can uh, mostly, uh, what stands out to me is people who want to talk to you one-on-one -on -one and get troubleshooting help. You have a you have an hourly rate, a uh, pretty reasonable hourly rate uh, for people who want help fixing their quads. I know you, like me, help people on Discord and email for free, but uh, it was sometimes people want to get on the phone and... Uh, yeah, and, uh, they I like, can do that. I like to call it above and beyond. So, like, if you right. if you need that that special extra thing, if you just want to sit down with somebody and you don't feel like waiting, and you really just want to ask a bunch of questions, or you really want to just like get somebody watching your computer and telling you where to click, whatever you need, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm here for you to do that. So yeah, yeah, um, and uh, also of course me fbvknowitall.com. People know that's my website. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and read the super chats. Isaac Mitchell, Mitchell, Isaac Mitchell. Thank you for a two dollars super chat. Super deluxe. Thanks for a ten dollars super chat. Super deluxe always super generous. Blunty and Bardwell are greater than the sum of all parts. We make we're too great. We're like a Reese's peanut butter cup. Now, but are you the chocolate or are you the peanut butter filling? I hope I'm the peanut butter. I think I'm the peanut butter. Because <laughs> it's like the Reese's peanut butter. It's like the special peanut butter. Right. I'm the chocolate on the outside. I'm the sweet, inviting outside, and you're yeah. the like the, the 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 surprise on the inside that adds the flavor. I think that's yeah. valid. I really do think yeah. that's valid. King right. Poopra, thank you for a ten dollars <laughs> super chat. Cygnus, thank you for a ten dollars super chat. Uh, I was he was thinking about upgrading from my Dominator V3 to my HDO2, but I might should wait. Will Fat Shark or another company respond with another analog HD0 product? Well, we know HD0 is working on an HD0 goggle, and Blunty, it's supposed to have analog in it as well, right? Uh, analog support. I'm not sure if it's integrated, but I know analog support. Might be a, like, a module. Yeah, and I think it's not going to be a traditional module bay like you would expect, in, the, but it'll be like a rail system. I, I believe the case is it's like a rail, and you'll be mm -hmm. able to put a module bay on the rail. So it's kind of modular, so you can put an HD0 thing on the rail or that mm -hmm. sort of thing. That's my understanding yeah. of that. That would be like if you were going to wait for a goggle, that's the main thing that is like coming soon. But that's not even coming that soon, to be honest. Yes. Um, if you're big into analog, I think you the HDO2, the Skyzone Sky04X, or the Orca are the three you got to look at. And I don't yeah. think there are any like hints of new big analog goggles coming well, soon. We did talk about Fetrick. That at least I would guess in the next three to six months, we'll see some flagship goggle from Fat Truck. Whether it'll be worth buying and a good price, I do not know if that's the case. Hmm. But from what we heard from their investor call and what we've seen from them, I would expect something to come from them to generate revenue. So, fair enough. That's valid. Um, oh, uh, we also see in the Discord, uh, Betaflight RC4 just released. All so right. There you go. There we go. Two weeks. Um, Otis. Seven, seven minutes. <laughs> Thank you for a five dollar super chat. Can you recommend a DJI drone or an alternative? I need to scout treetops for my abandoned drone. No breaking the bank. DJI Mavic Mini. That's the one I would recommend uh, as at a budget. Uh, outside of DJI itself, I'm not sure what's like good, but um, the DJI Mavic Mini. If I wanted something like a DJI drone without spending too much money, you may be able to find a used V1, which is probably pretty decent. And probably at a fair price. Duane Dane, thank you for a twenty dollars super chat. Maybe Starlink could be added to the quad plane. The new Starlink antenna is smaller than the previous. Seems I like the mobile Starlink should be the ultimate live video feed and mission planner link. I may be wrong, but I know currently Starlink has problems with moving. Uh, like it has to be stationary to connect, and there's geo locking. I'm not sure if that's like if that will change once they release the geo lock, or if it is strictly because there's a problem with moving in the satellite link. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, I'm, that does seem like a good option if you can do it. Yeah, Brian Lewis was hoping for a rant today. We thought about making the do newbie drone connector a rant, but we decided we didn't want to like we wanted to treat it like news and be fair to it, and not just treat it like a rant. Yes. So no rant today. Wamfb thinks. For a $10 super chat. 
Y'all agree. If there's go something ahead. you think we should have ranted about, or I think I should have ranted about, go uh, to FBV News, or sorry, news at fbvknowitall.com and email us and let us know what that is. So, yeah. Yeah. That's going to, of all the things people submit shit for us to rant about, it's probably <laughs> my, not my favorite. Anyway, make any submissions you want. Uh, Coelho yeah. FPV, thanks for a $5 super chat. Good show. And Noid FPV, thanks for $2. What's up, everybody? Uh, that is going to do it, folks, uh, for the news. We will see you next time. Uh, love your subscription. Love you hitting the like button and commenting. And, of course, love you being here watching. As always, we'll see you next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. As always. Oh, Bye, everybody. Later, guys.